Jeff Sherman is Deputy Chief Investment Officer at Double Line Capital. Uh, we were just asking uh, about the size and the move we've seen uh, in bonds. What do you make of it? Yeah, well, I mean, this is a follow through from where we started last weekend. And I think that you guys were discussing the stock market and you're waking the stock market in the U.S. has been waking up to what the global stock market has been pricing, as well as the Treasury market. And even for the move we saw in Treasuries today, you haven't really seen a massive weakening in, let's say, high quality credit spreads today, which is a bit shocking. Um, there was a little bit of widening out on the top of the capital structure, but really nothing significant until you got really the junky stuff. But uh, this is definitely a fear-based buying market. I think you've seen a lot of foreigners come in. We saw that from tick data last week, uh, where there was a pretty significant amount of foreign buying last year. And I think what it's endemic of is just really this flight to quality trade. And so if I compare this to something like, let's, let's say the German Bund, for instance, today, the 10-year Bund has, has really been hovering this, this same range where treasuries continue to rally. And so I think what you're seeing is that the fear money is coming to the U.S. market and it's being put in treasuries right now. So um, I just think that it's the unknown. Uh, you want to be patient with the unknown, but there's definitely fear. It is, it is resonant in the treasury market today. What are you expecting central banks to do? Well, I mean, the bond market's telling you they need a cut in the next couple of weeks when they meet. Uh, we look at the inversion of the curve now from Fed funds right down. I mean, you have about a, a gap here of almost 30 basis points plus uh, from Fed fund policy rate where we're trading to like the two year. So at this stage, I mean, it, it's it's pretty, pretty uh, horrible that Mr. Powell has to go on stage in two weeks and you know, talk about how great the jobs number is. He thought everything was under control. Then all of a sudden, uh, due to the fears today, the entire curve is melting down. And so I think from the perspective of we have to wait and see what happens this week. Uh, we're one day. It's one day's panic. We shouldn't be adjusting portfolios on that. But I, I really don't want to buy rates hoping that the Fed cuts when they meet in the middle of March. At, at this stage, uh, if you look at the inflation data right now, and again, global growth will be a concern on inflation. It, it can bring stuff back down. But the entire Treasury curve gives you a negative real yield based on where we just saw the inflation print. And even adjusting for oil prices, how we've seen the consumer, at least in the U.S., be spending this year, especially with the real estate market, it's really hard to see inflation being less than 2%. Yes, it could happen if the, if the growth rate slows down significantly, but on a 137 10-year, it doesn't really help you significantly. So, yeah, I think the Fed does have to cut at this stage because the market's asking for it, but I, I think they want to be reticent to do so. That's why I think we need a couple more days to figure out what's really going on and see how they're gonna, what's going to be the reaction function. And also, Mike, you know, just sort of walking around the, the question of U.S. growth. You know, last week, the last few weeks, when, when U.S. stocks were bought, even though fears about the coronavirus were piling up, it was, well, the U.S. is relatively insulated. Yes. We, we are a domestic services consumer economy that is not exposed to the rest of the world. So, so what changed about the picture today? Um, well, first of all, services include travel. <laughs> so there are parts of services that could slow down and could suffer from any kind of consumer confidence hiccup. Um, but I don't think much changed except we got to a point where the market itself got, got extended in certain areas and uh, the rest of the world is selling here. I mean, that's what's going on. It was, it was a haven for a long time. It might still prove to be one on a relative basis, but down 5% from an all-time high at historically high valuations is not necessarily building in much of a cushion on the short term. Anastasia and Jeff, thank you both right, for I joining think us. I you nailed that. Thank you. Yeah, okay, go quick, quick final thank word. You. Go for it, Jeff. I was going to say, you nailed it there. I wasn't dancing on the growth question. I'm saying that I think the bond market, the Treasury market, is ignoring the growth side of the equation. That, you know, we'll see if there's resilience. But just because the people don't take a cruise, take an airline, doesn't mean they go out to dinner. Or they don't do things in their local area. So uh, that's why I just don't like the tenure at these levels today. But I understand where we're at. Thank Jeff, you. Anastasia, thank you so much.